Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of the Collider Games podcast. My name's Dennis Zen. I'm in here st- in studio with Tony Revis. Yeah, and also through the magic of a sky, Caboose, you're back. You're back. I am back. Yeah. I'm back. I missed a week. Uh, and it had to be the week that Borderlands 3 yeah, was course. officially revealed, of course. <laughs> but, um, but I'm happy to be back. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that. That's uh, something uh, we did cover last week, but we got more details. Yeah. Plus, you went to PAX East. We'll talk about yep. that. Yep. Um, I know the embargo for the Iron Man VR now is mm-hmm. up so that Tony can talk yes. about that. Yes. And then we're talking about also Anthem. How, how things went wrong. Ooh. I mean, oh boy. Yep. there was kind of that expose uh, article that Kotaku put out so mm-hmm. we'll talk about that yeah. all right let, let's start off with the first thing uh borderlands 3 gets a release date a new trailer mm. yes e- exclusive to the epic game store for the pc uh supposedly some cross-platform play for the pc and xbox one mm-hmm. uh why don't you why don't you start off with uh, your thoughts and maybe some more details Caboose. all right so i actually got to go to the reveal like the, the full-on presentation mm-hmm. live at pax east that they did first of all incredible loved it the crowd we all like everyone bled borderlands in that room mm-hmm. that was awesome but yeah so borderlands 3 officially announced is going to be launching september 13th this year year which is amazing i'm mm-hmm. so happy that it's going to be coming out this year i think we all expected it to especially considering they had mentioned they were working on the game for five years time mm-hmm. yeah so if it wasn't coming out this year then like damn <laughs> either they're going to make this the greatest game of all time which i think it still has the opportunity to be um or they were just going through some really rough development problems but there's a bunch of different editions that you can pre-order out there right now obviously the standard edition deluxe super deluxe and collector's edition Everything, no matter what, when you pre-order the game, you get a gold weapon skins pack. Mm -hmm. And what that does is you can just apply like a gold skin to every weapon in the game, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, And then you also get a weapon trinket. Um, Within the deluxe edition, you get some cosmetic items. I think this edition is completely useless, if you're asking me. (laughs) Yeah. Because then you have the super deluxe edition, which gives you everything in the deluxe edition, all the cosmetic items, and then the season pass, the DLC. And that's what you want. You know, if you're if you're going to pay extra money for the game, you might as well be forking over the money to get the additional content that is going to provide you more hours in the game, not just the cosmetic items. Um, and then we got the collector's edition. You got a giant diamond loot chest replica. I want to see what that full thing looks mm-hmm. like. Um, some figurines, some lithographs, keychains, a cloth map of the galaxy, the game, of course, a steel book case. And then you get the season pass and the deluxe bonus content and, of course, those gold weapon skins. The biggest news story, I'd say, coming out of Borderlands 3 right now is that the game is going to be exclusive to the Epic Game yes. Store. Mm-hmm. That is if you're buying it on PC. PC it's yeah. not like exclusive to PC or yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, just if you're going to buy it on PC, the only avenue to buy it is through the Epic Games launcher. And that is going to be exclusive for six months time and then it will become available on steam a lot of people are very very upset about this and it's hard for me to provide a very educated opinion because i am not an avid pc gamer like Mm -hmm. i play pc games but i mainly play on my xbox my playstation 4 so it's hard for me to sit here and be like well why does it matter so much because i'm sure someone who plays pc games a ton will be like well, here's a list of why this is horrible. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a little bit of it. You know, Epic Games Launcher just isn't very safe, isn't very secure. It's always online, so you'll never have an opportunity to be playing Borderlands 3 in an offline way. Like, if your internet went out, Mm -hmm. God forbid, you won't be able to play the game. Um, So there are some issues with the Epic Games Launcher, but I'll say this much. Because of the outcry, um, we have a lot of months to go until we reach September, until we reach the launch of Borderlands 3. And Epic has got a lot of money from Fortnite and from whatever else. So if they really listen, if people complain enough, I'm sure come September, come Borderlands 3's launch, maybe the Epic Games launcher will be in a much better state. Mm -hmm. And that way, a lot more people will be happy. But as of right now, I can understand a bit of the concern that PC gamers have. Yeah. Um, just to put some prices on the things you talked about, you, the Borderlands yes. 3 uh, Diamond Loot Chest Collector's Edition is $250. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Uh, 
Super Deluxe Edition is a hundred dollars. The Deluxe yeah. Edition is eighty dollars, and the standard version is sixty dollars. Which which one are you guys buying, Tony? Which uh, one? I'm probably gonna go just the regular one. If okay. I was gonna get one, I would do the Super Deluxe so I can get the season pass. Okay, right. But right. Uh, I'm definitely not doing two hundred fifty bucks, even though that stuff <laughs> looks great uh, so far. Maybe yeah, yeah. until we see it, you know what I mean? Like. But uh, yeah, the, if they want to send us one, we'll do another unboxing. Yeah. I mean, hey, we, we, we've done some. We've done some Gearbox. unboxing. We've done some successful I made, unboxings. I made for... that Devil May Cry <laughs> look good, and I was getting roast, roasted in the comments. People like, "Oh, this is this doesn't look very good." I'm like, "No, nah, look how good I made it look." <laughs> um, no, no, no. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll probably yeah. Uh, we did, we did a Resident Evil one, and we did a Devil May Cry mm, one, yeah. and you know, Cops did Resident Evil, right? Yeah, Cops did because nice. he loves that franchise. Nice. Um, of so yeah, if, if they want to send, yeah, I remember wasn't the the, the Red Dead Redemption one, like the big collectors, the not collectors, but like the super collectors version. I forgot yeah. the name of it. It didn't come with a game, right? It was just the like, no, it the was stuff. just like a yeah, yeah. cool collector's not, item. Not I don't know. It was yeah, weird. it wasn't even digital code. It was like yeah. straight that's up. That's insane. That's yeah. insane. No. I'll probably just get the regular one or, or get the one with the, uh, the, the season pass or the I'll just get the season pass, pass later. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't know. Yeah. I, think, I think right now I'm in the same camp as Tony. I want to see mm -hmm. the actual contents of the collector's edition because – for a Canadian and our horrible dollar, it costs three hundred and thirty dollars <laughs> yeah, in yeah, Canada. Yeah. So uh, it's almost the price of a freaking console, which yeah. is yeah, insane. that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I I am a die-hard Borderlands fan. I've been following this franchise for a decade now. Yeah. Since I was very young, this game has been a huge part of my life. But three hundred and thirty dollars is yeah. a lot of money yeah. Yeah, it's, it over it's a lot of cake. for a little a lot test of, of figurines you know so i want to i want to actually see what the contents are because a lot of the times honestly especially nowadays collector's editions really don't live up to the hype if you're mm -hmm. asking me marvel vs. capcom infinites is the first one that immediately comes to mind oh, yeah. <laughs> those infinity stones faster. Yeah. yeah, that was an at the, the infinity eggs as eggs. many people yeah. have <laughs> Well, they're also getting a lot more expensive. I mean, yeah. when, I was, when I was buying the collector's editions of Fallout, like New Vegas and 3, they were like 100 bucks. You got the game, yeah, right? and then you got a few little, like, uh, the, a little statue or something. Yeah, yeah, I got a lunchbox for, you know, a little thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, but the you're talking 150 to 250 now for yeah. these like super that diamond loot chest better be diamond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, it's very expensive. Um, yeah, so right now I don't I don't want to spend I don't want to fork over the money just off of the words. Mm -hmm. right. No, I don't want to be dangerous. like oh that sounds cool. Yeah, because who knows like the figurines could be tiny. Right, the mm -hmm. keychains could be just useless. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's nothing in there that makes me go 250 dollars. That's worth the price, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think if change our if mind, anything, Gearbox, yeah. we're sending yeah. one. Change our mind. Yeah. I know. Change our mind. I think though, where a majority of the price yeah. might come from is the actual chest mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Um. So we'll see what the size is like. I, I just want to get a visual look at everything before I make a decision of, you know, as a diehard fan, should I be spending the money? Yeah. Um, but until then, I'm probably just going to go with the super deluxe, so I get that season pass and everything. What do you What do you guys think about the the cross platform co op? So so apparently they reached out to 2K and they said, "Oh well, we're still looking at it." They're mm -hmm. not saying no. They're not saying yes. Yeah. And then Microsoft put it underneath there in the Microsoft Store. They put underneath capabilities cro cross platform play. But yeah. we're we're talking Xbox One to PC. It doesn't yeah. really matter. Obviously, like if you have Xbox One to PS4, it's like Ooh. the biggest cross platform That's, play. That was so amazing. Yeah, yeah. but uh, this is PC to Borla, so it's not or PC to uh, to Xbox One. That's not as exciting, right? Yeah, it's definitely not it's as exciting. Cool. But it's still cool. Definitely. It's cool, of course. It's, it's, it's cool, you know, it's one of those things I know Microsoft wants to do more of. That's why they're kind of teaming up with Nintendo Switch to try and get some yeah. of their games. It's, and, it's Sony who doesn't play nice always. They're the yeah, ones who no. ball is always in their court on this cross-platform talk. Yeah. Um, but I do I do like the idea. I hope it does end up at least being cross-platform between PC and, and console because mm -hmm. I think – you know, honestly, that should start becoming the norm with yeah. a lot of these online games. Just allow us to play with who we want to play. The yeah. biggest shining example, Rocket League and Fortnite are fully cross-platform capable. Xbox, PlayStation 4, 
everything. Mm-hmm. And still, PlayStation 4 comes out on top on the sales every single month mm-hmm. for their console sales above Xbox. So I don't know what Sony is scared of in that, like, oh, we might, you know, shy away some people who maybe would buy a PlayStation. Anyone who's owning an Xbox right now who is deciding not to get a PlayStation is not going to no matter what. Like they, yeah, they're already it's right. too it's too late in the generation, yeah. man. It's it, all yeah. the generation wars are fought in the first like two years, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's when that's when you try and get them. And the in the the console that won the last generation definitely has a head start in that race mm-hmm. in the next generation, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean victory because we just saw these flip flop. They seem like to flip flop every last, generation. Yeah, every yeah. generation yeah, yeah, yeah. seems to flip. So. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, yeah. Also, like we talked about before, with cloud computing, cloud gaming, mm-hmm. uh, with Stadia, I, people, I guess, uh, told us in the comments, it's, it was, I guess it's short for Stadium, the Google Stadia, Stadia sure. yeah. that oh, okay. Microsoft's PlayStation's, uh, uh, Amazon's working on, Apple's working on, we just saw, mm-hmm. saw that. That I, I feel like cross-platform play will be much easier once. Hopefully, because that's yeah. that, that's always my biggest question: is like, is it what's the infrastructure behind it to get me on my PS4 to be able to play with Caboose on his yeah, Xbox? Yeah. Like, right. how does that even is that is that work easily? Yeah, you know what I'm I mean? Sure, I'm sure it's easier than they say. Yeah, I know. <laughs> do well, it, do it. Want to play with Caboose? Go, do it. If we go way back, <laughs> I know we got we got to get some games of Apex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if we go way back in like the early days of Fortnite, they accidentally quote unquote. Yeah. added in crossplay with PlayStation and Xbox. And for them, it was pretty much the flick of a switch yep. yeah. and it was implemented. So I don't think it's as hard as people think. It's just about Sony and whether or not Being they greedy. want to allow it. Because uh, from what we understand, yeah. Xbox is on board. Yeah. They are down. You know, so the, the ball's in your court. Sony, PlayStation, oh, Sony. let's yeah, right. Let everyone have fun. So, uh, Caboose, you were at the uh, PAX East, and you yeah. were there for the Borderlands 3 reveal. Why don't mm-hmm. you tell us about, you know, just the whole overall atmosphere of the event, what kind of games you saw? I, I saw yeah. there's, like, more than just games there. There's, a lot of, like, tabletop stuff, VR yeah. stuff, uh, obviously people selling, you know, toys. And, and, and So how was your overall experience? Oh, PAX, PAX is always a lot of fun for me. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's been my yearly tradition for the past four or five years is I always go to PAX East. That's I, I love it. Um, and it's such a quick trip for me, too, from, mm-hmm. from Toronto to Boston. But, um, yeah, no, it was great. I think the main thing that was interesting for me to check out was Mortal Kombat 11 on a Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people have been asking the question, you mm-hmm. know, is this even worth it? Is it going to run well? Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of those worries I can put to rest. It runs perfect, smooth 60 FPS on the Nintendo Switch. Obviously, there's a bit of a graphics downgrade. You're not going to be getting the same fidelity that you would out of an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. But it still is a pretty decent port. It looks good. It feels good. It plays good. We only got to play the handheld version with the Joy-Cons, so I couldn't really do any combos. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder how to feel with like a Pro Controller in my hand. But, I mean... Switch, Mortal Kombat 11, I think that's great. It's it's cool to see that it's going to come in day and date. Uh, it's going to be out at the exact same time as it is on every other console mm-hmm. and every other platform. I think that is amazing. Um, and it's just another another cool thing added to the Switch. If you, if you own a Switch, if you don't own the other consoles, this will be a great game to have on the go. Mortal Kombat's a ton of fun, especially Mortal Kombat 11. And playing through the story would definitely be a blast to just be on the plane or mm-hmm. you know on a long car ride or something and you have your switch with you you can play through Mortal Kombat 11 so that was cool um, there's a ton of indie games that is that has a huge presence always at PAX East one of the coolest indie games I played at PAX East was actually one of my favorite games I played at the show was this game called Splitgate hmm. now I'm sure plenty of people probably haven't heard of it but the best way to describe it and this is pretty much the way that everyone who's played the game has described it it's Halo mixed with portal so so you kind of get the gunplay of halo Mm -hmm. and the sort of style with the characters this red team versus blue team but you can create portals in certain areas around the map it can get really competitive it was so much fun Mm -hmm. and i was extremely surprised by it i'll say this much it does feel like a bit of a halo ripoff (laughs) there are a lot of halo similarities but um i had a ton of fun with that game 
Uh, outside of that, I didn't. I, there was days gone. Mm -hmm. I wasn't unfortunately able to try that out. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of people that did, and they said that it was great, and they had a lot of fun with it. Um, the hordes of zombies that come your way seem to be really intense, really insane, uh, and that's coming out later this month. So we'll we'll definitely be talking more about that soon. Um, but yeah, Pax East, it's always a great show. It's always a good time. There's uh, there's so much to see, so much to do, and yeah, it's it's a good, it's a nice place to sit down and try out and check out some indie games, you know, where, where they really don't get an opportunity to shine at a place like E3 mm -hmm. indie games really have a big presence at PAX East. So I thought that was great. Okay, cool. And then of course being at the borderlands three presentation, being mm -hmm. there live in the main theater, incredible experience. I got a borderlands mask. I'm showing it on screen right now. Okay. You guys can't see it, no. but uh, I got a borderlands mask. Um, and then I got a code for the remaster, which nice. I think we, we might be doing a review for here on Collider Games. So, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, it looks, sounds like you had a good time there. Did you, yes. do you know why Gearbox decided to, did they just kind of want all the focus to be on them in terms of re releasing all this information and, and announcing at PAX East versus yeah. E3? Was that the, was that the idea like, Hey, like if we do E3, sure, it's a more covered event, but we're going to get lost amongst you yeah. know, a ton of other announcements. I, honestly, I'm pretty confused why they met, like why they decided to let PAX East be the place to reveal this mm -hmm. game. And uh, it kind of didn't work out in their favor as well. There was a bit of technical issues, oh. especially when it came to like the actual trailer reveal for Borderlands 3. Mm -hmm. And I know Randy Pitchard was pretty upset about that <laughs> um but yeah i'm honestly not sure i think at the end of the day they could have done like what marvel studios did when they announced their movie slate they could have it could have been a random tuesday mm. in uh, in march and people would have been tuning in they still would have had the same numbers on twitch live to see what the hell's up with the next mm. borderlands game because they haven't uttered the words borderlands 3 until Pax East, mm -hmm. right. but, they, but they've been teasing it though. They've been teasing oh, for it. Sure. A lot. They've been teasing, it. and there was rumors sure. too uh, out a, a while ago. Maybe that forced their hand a little bit. That there was rumors yeah. with the studio and stuff like they need to get this out or announce it to you know for the because yeah. the so fiscal year the, was coming up and, and yeah. Some of the that things that I heard, supposedly someone legitimately, I I don't know if this is officially true. Might have to do a little more research on it. But from what I had heard, someone stole like a USB drive. <laughs> from Randy Pitchford or from someone at Gearbox that had a ton of information on it what? about Borderlands 3 and, like, future Gearbox projects. And they were I, – I can only imagine how terrifying that is because they just – it was just some Joe Schmo who took it and they had the keys to <laughs> leaking everything about Borderlands That's 3 wild. as early as possible. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, apparently they offered the guy some free swag and some games and he just handed it back over to him. Um, but yeah, like I'm sure that <laughs> I know it's crazy. Oh um, man, I'm sure that uh, you know it, it was just about time, mm -hmm. especially if the game was coming out this year. It's mm -hmm. like, listen, people have been wanting to hear about this game. Yeah. Since when? When was Borderlands two? Twenty twelve. Mm -hmm. Tales from the Borderlands not necessarily like a mainstream Borderlands game. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that counts, although it's a phenomenal game. Um. But yeah, people have been waiting to hear about Borderlands for so long, so it was just it was just long overdue, and it was great to see it. You know, we we've, we've been hearing and seeing so many teases from the game for so long. I remember back at like the GDC in 2017, they did a presentation showing off the Unreal Engine and the character model that they were showing is actually a character in Borderlands 3. Hmm. So, huh. okay. long long time coming yeah, for this yeah. reveal, and I am I'm so happy that it's finally here. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, Tony, you, we talked about uh, you and Doreen went to this PlayStation VR event uh, in San Francisco last week. Yeah. And you guys talked about uh, some stuff, but you were embargoed for certain other stuff. I know right. you talked about Trover, Save mm -hmm. the Universe, a game I also played at uh, E3 last year. Um, but now you can finally talk about Iron Man yes. VR. You guys did a video. Yes. You guys talked about it. Why don't you give kind of like an overview of sure the game and your experience. Yeah. It. So this was the main event of the, uh, the thing, you know, yeah. this was the big one. They had, uh, the most stations set up. This yeah. was the longest line waiting to go. And it was the longest yeah. demo too. people were. And I don't think they were expecting that the, 
because like they're like, oh, like it's taking twenty or thirty minutes, mm-hmm. which was awesome wow. for us getting in there for twenty <laughs> and thirty minutes, getting to play it because it is incredible. It's incredible. There's a ton of awesome things coming to PlayStation VR. There's a ton of incredible, awesome things already on PlayStation VR. Nothing's made me want to go out and necessarily buy a VR. It's kind of one of those things like I remember when Nintendo Wii came out. Mm -hmm. It was something I wanted my best friend to have because I can go over there and play it. Mm -hmm. But it's just going to collect dust at my house. I'm not going to play it by myself Mm -hmm. that often. Same thing for VR. I was like, ah, it'd be cool if my buddy has it and I can go play it when I want to. But now I I need to get one because Mm -hmm. this game... It's going to be incredible. Uh, the demo, uh, there's, you know, like we said in the video, there's kinks that are, that are working out because it's still, you know, in beta and they're, they're figuring it out. But you are Iron Man. Like, point blank, you're Iron Man. And that's what we dream of when it's VR. You're wearing this headset. <laughs> What's better than feeling like you're wearing the Iron Man suit? Mm, the heads-up cool. display, everything. It, it feels so smooth when you're flying around. It takes a little bit to get used to, but there's a great tutorial. The first part of the demo was a great tutorial mm-hmm. that when we jumped into the next mission, I was ready. I was flying. I was hitting the marks I was supposed to hit. Nice. Um, I was blasting, you know, planes coming at me. And uh, it's it's incredible and and for it to be such a just surprise no one really even knew about it mm-hmm. is, is awesome you know because i wasn't really even expecting anything and then now it's just like oh what a gift to be given yeah. you know out of nowhere um the story seems like it's going to be you know really intense and really full-fledged experience that's kind of what i've been talking about when it comes to vr and the way that we're moving forward with vr at the beginning stages of it when we're first learning it you know, yeah. Oculus Rift and all the stuff. It seems like there's mm. these just gimmicky things. They're like, oh, look, I can see my hand. Mm-hmm. And like, that was cool. <laughs> now it's like, no, they're having these, we're going to have these full fledged experiences, these full games. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine Marvel's Spider Man, but now it's going to be, I don't know if it'll be that big and that robust, <laughs> but it's going to be a big deal. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's going to be a full experience. And, um, which is which can be tricky because I don't want to wear a headset for too long mm-hmm. probably, yeah. but I, I, for that 30 minutes, I didn't want them to take it off. I was like, don't. I want to keep playing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the move controllers, you use great. You fly mm-hmm. just like you would think you would fly if you were Iron Man. Um, if you want to really? fly forward, you're, you're putting your hands down, you know, like your repulsors are, you know, blasting it. You put your wrists up to fly up, put your oh, hands nice. out in front of you to shoot. Um, which is great. The only issues they had, like when you do have both your hands up to mm-hmm. shoot, um, your reticles can get crossed. Mm-hmm. That they, they, they even oh, noticed that too. Yeah. So I yeah. think even just simply maybe like color coordinating. Yeah, color coordinating. Once you know which one's your left and which one's your right. Yeah. Uh, something as simple as that would fix that. Because I thought, I was like, why am I? I'm like, oh, I gotta, yeah. they're crossed. Um, but other than that, it's incredible. Um, I can't wait to, to see what else comes of it and like, how big of an experience this is. Yeah, I feel like this is an accessory seller, right? Like yes. this is, you know, when you oh, talk yeah. about uh, exclusive games on PS4, Xbox One, where people buy, like I know Koi here, who, who uh, hosts uh, Collider Heroes, he bought, yeah. he hadn't played games in like, I don't know, like 10, 15 years, and he bought the Spider-Man PS4, PS4 right. game just because of Spider-Man, sure. right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like yeah. Iron Man VR is what's going to sell those PSVR units yeah. more than anything right. that mm-hmm. they that, that's out there. Right. This this might finally be that big push mm-hmm. that VR in general has needed to be reaching out to a wider audience. Yes. Uh, I'm surprised that Batman Arkham VR couldn't really do that um, back when that came out because I remember that was kind of one of my first experiences mm-hmm. playing a VR game or like like a big VR game like that. And that was crazy. Mm-hmm. That was so awesome. You genuinely felt like you were Bruce Wayne, like you were Batman. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, Tony, though, when you're playing and you're flying around, did you feel any sort of motion sickness? Did it like did it bug you in any way or were you like you were in it? No, I, I was in it. I felt OK. I felt smooth. And, and I've my experience with VR, I tend to have that little motion sickness mm-hmm. or be feel yeah. a little dizzy from time to time. Yeah. When we did the void, mm-hmm. I like for the first like five minutes, I was like, uh, uh-huh. like I was uh. scared to walk, right? <laughs> this, you are on your feet and you can move 360, which is great. Um, oh, nice. So you can turn around and you're, you're going all over the place. And, cool. um, they have a nice thing. If you look down, there's like a safety zone. Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, get back to the safety zone so you're not bumping into walls and stuff. Uh, uh w- w- which okay, is, cool. which is great. But flying around, like it just felt once, especially once I got the hang of it, 
like you're hitting tar- you're you're flying during the t- tutorial and you're like hitting targets and stuff mm-hmm. and at first I'm like oh no I got to bend my wrist down to go forward and up so you're figuring that out and once I figured it out I was going through coves and stuff <laughs> I was like it felt awesome yeah. Um, nice and yeah I didn't have any there was no dizziness or anything like that like I just felt like I was in it nice. yeah nice. cool so we'll cool. keep, keep. It, 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 Go ahead. I, I heard there was a bit of a there's a bit of a story with this one. Is there anything you can talk there about? Is, or yeah. Is there so so in the first mission, um, you know, you're in a plane, and it's it it doesn't fit into the MCU or it's not tied into the Spider-Man game. It is its own oh, thing. Okay. Um, okay. But that we because we had questions about that because you you hear about Pepper Potts being yeah. the CEO. So you're like, oh, maybe this you know mm. fits somewhere in there. Um, you see Friday as your virtual assistant in there, and then Friday turns into. Uh, uh, Ghost, oh, who's in okay. Ant Man so and the that, Wasp. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Ghost is a villain, um, which was cool. And then, like the plane, cool. plane explodes, and you like fly out of the. Your suit flies out, so then you dive out of the plane without a suit. But as it's coming towards <laughs> you, you like have to catch it with your hands. Is really nice. really cool. And then um, you're trying to protect the plane as it's getting ready to crash. Like you're trying to guide it down as Pepper's trying to f- land it. Yeah. That's yeah. all we really know. That's all we got out of the story. Okay. But um, we got a hint of our first villain. Um, I don't know if that's cool. Be the, yeah, because Ghost, Ghost is traditionally an Iron Man villain, right? From what I remember. Right. Yeah. So, um, cool. but that's all that we got to know. But it, it that even that part of it was cool. Like being in, and I'm I'm so goofy when I play VR, like in a mm-hmm. cutscene and stuff. Like there's like a iPad on the table, or you know. Not an iPad, but similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like grab it and throw it across the room just to like see what you can do in <laughs> VR and like twist the knobs and stuff. I love doing that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it's cool. I mean, the narrative was, and apparently there's a lot of, you're, I think you're in the air most of the time. Yeah. I think that was one of the questions people ask. Like, are you in the air most of the time? It's like, I think you are. Mm-hmm. You're on the ground during cutscenes and stuff where you'll get to look around and whatnot, but not okay. be able to move. Um, and other people, people ask, like, are you on rails? Like, no, you're flying. You're controlling everything. Um, with just the direction that you're looking and the way that uh, you're you're flying forward or flying up, you get to decide all of that. Um, wow. But apparently, it's going to be a pretty you know. There's going to be storyline. You're going to be doing missions. There's cutscenes. All it's going to be a narrative thing. So I'm really really looking forward to it. And I don't think there's a release date yet. Um, I think it's coming out this year though. Mm-hmm. I think they've announced. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they've been working on it for a long time, just in secret. Um, it's been yeah, a few so- years. So. When they when they officially like when they revealed it during that state of play that PlayStation did, I remember because everyone when the initial announcement happened, everyone was very cynical over the idea, like, yes. you know, because because of the way it happened. Right. You know, we we were going and we see the Marvel logo, we see Friday and 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 Iron Man and stuff, and it's like, oh my god, an Iron Man game like it's happening, and it ends up G- just being VR, which right. still looks great. Mm-hmm. You know, people were like I said initially cynical to the idea, but the more that I've heard about it, especially hearing you talking about it, Tony and some of the other people who have talked about it and their experience playing it, it sounds really fun. And this definitely sounds, like Dennis was saying, like a product seller. This yeah. sounds like this is going to get people to buy mm-hmm. a VR kit so they can try out this game. Yeah, and the whole purpose is so they buy it, they like it, and then they start and buying they other the games. Other. Right. And that's yeah. the thing about VR. You know, like we're working on that Twin Peaks VR game, and we're, right. you know, right now it's for HTC Vive and Oculus Rift, but we're, we're looking to do a PSVR version down the line. Nice. And just in general with VR, it's one of those things where it's – it's hard to sell it in, let's say, a regular trailer form, right? Because right. VR is something has, you have to experience. Sure. Because when you look at it on like a 2D space, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, yeah. it just looks like a game, right? right? It looks like a game that's like, okay, whatever. Where the truly the experiencing it is a different thing. Like Absolutely. I'm sure like before people have ever played VR, or let's say like we, we went to the Void VR thing, mm-hmm. like... You're like, oh, I don't know. And then you play and you're like, oh, okay, that's what yeah. it's about. So it's just really hard to sell. I think that's the biggest barrier. Yeah. One is, you know, like the the complicated nature of like having this this setup, but they're making that easier now. Now they're having stuff that don't have sensors and whatnot. It's you just buy the, the headset with the controllers. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. without even like having a PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a big deal. And then the price points will keep going down, technology will keep getting better and like I said, it, the more people play it, the more people will will enjoy it. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So definitely keep our eyes out on that one. So sure. uh, speaking of uh, s- armored suits and flying, <laughs> we're talking about our next topic, which has been <sighs> kind of like 
uh, everyone's talking about this this subject uh, online. Yeah. Uh, Kotaku released a kind of like their expose. They interviewed like I think nineteen either former or current uh, Bioware developers. They're all anonymous, obviously. Yep. To figure out what was what the behind the scenes story was mm. behind the making of Anthem, and mm. it's just very very interesting to see how it, it went. And actually, uh, at least from the parts that I read, it seemed like these issues were already a problem. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they said actually the worst thing to happen was that by uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, which is the third uh, Dragon Age game, was a success. One game of the year, yeah. Yeah, they were like, Please. it was a bad thing because yeah. they had already been under all these like crazy work conditions, a lot of stress, a lot of yeah. people going crazy, working long hours, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And, then that, and then with Dragon Age Inquisition validating that hard work. Right. Then Bioware was like, oh, so that's the way to keep doing it. Right. They're Which, hoping it would fail. Oh, boy. Yes. They were almost hoping it would fail so they could see this is not the way to make a game. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but it won game of the year. And they're like, all right, it ain't broke. It's Don't still, fix it's it. It's still not the way. It's, it's not. Yeah. Still, and it's now we've seen. Now, now Anthem took that bullet. Yeah. yeah. You had a, a Mass Effect uh, Andromeda didn't do. It was disappointing. Didn't do that well. Mm -hmm. And then you have now Anthem is the, the bigger one. Like, yeah. I know Andromeda came out and was disappointing. People were weren't ha happy about it mm -hmm. but this is the one that like okay they were expecting this game to be like contender for game of the year yeah, had type a lot of promise of, yep. uh they and, want they wanted this to sell like destiny Souls. yes uh, yeah. and even more so i think and yeah. it just didn't do it and they, they listed a lot of different reasons they were saying that like originally the game was called beyond and mm -hmm. they they couldn't secure the worldwide rights to that title because it's a very common title. So they went with Anthem, and then people said that the developers themselves were like, "What does that have to do? What, what does that What does that mean? They yeah. don't even know what it means." And they had to almost had to like come up with a story to like fit with the title versus the other way around. Yeah. And yep. just like the 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 goal and the aim and the inspiration for the original game really didn't make it to the final product. They. They mentioned that it wasn't supposed to be a shooter looter. It was supposed to be a co. It was always supposed to be multiplayer because I think there was some rumors that oh, it was supposed to be a, a single player game like a Mass Effect or a uh, Dragon Age, but it wasn't. It was always supposed to be multiplayer, but it was supposed to be more. They said like a, a survival, like a, survival like NASA style. Yeah, the, yeah. When I was reading it. Yeah. And it, it makes me real sad because I'm like, oh, that's a game I'd love to play. Mm -hmm. Is it, it felt like. Like when they were talking about you go on missions, co-op mm -hmm. missions, and it's survival. It felt like, oh, it's like kind of like Left 4 Dead in that way, mm -hmm. where it's like a team-based like survival thing, but also mixed with Destiny in that sci-fi shooter genre, kind of marrying those two is what mm -hmm. it seemed like, you know, initially. And just they didn't know what they were making. Yeah. They never ma knew what they were making. That was the problem. Yeah, I mean, it kind of sounds like <laughs> Fallout 76. Yeah. Like they had an idea of what they wanted to do and then it just kept changing and, and never ended up going anywhere. They also said they had uh, issues with EA's Frostbite engine, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because Frostbite is in intended for per first-person yes. shooters. Right. Frostbite is mainly made for, like, the Battlefield, Battlefield. games. Yep. Yeah. So to apply that to a third-person shooter... Uh, is something that is not an easy task, you know, it just and, and unfortunately that's just the mandate because this is being published by EA and they call the shots on that. So it's really unfortunate some of the working conditions that they had to be through. One of the scariest things I read in this entire expose is a quote from one of the developers that says, I can actually cannot count the amount of stress casualties we had on Mass Effect Andromeda or Anthem. And by stress casualty, he means that people at Bioware had such a mental breakdown from the stress that they're just gone for one to three months, and some of them come back while some of them don't. Yeah, that is not good to hear. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is man. I, we all knew, we all knew that Anthem had a bad launch. That behind the scenes there were some really rough things with the development of Anthem. I never knew. It was this bad. And now yeah. I'm beginning to question and beginning to wonder, 
games like Destiny and, mm-hmm. and what that game went through through its entire development run, could they have experienced similar things? I mean, probably, you know, mm-hmm. it just didn't reach the limelight like this has. Mm-hmm. And this is this is really, really bad. I hope some people at Bioware have taken a hit on this and I hope that this is not something that they're going to try and just let fade away Mm -hmm. because the mental health of your employees is so incredibly important above all else. Listen, we want it. We all want good games. We all want to make good games, but if that's at the cost of somebody's sanity, what is it worth? You know? So, Oh man, this is, this is really rough to, to be hearing and reading a lot of this information. Um, and, and I'm wishing a lot of those stress, ca- stress casualties. It's really hard. <laughs> the two words to say there. Uh, I'm, I'm wishing all those people who have went through that. I'm wishing them all well. I hope they're doing much better now. Mm-hmm. But um, this is this is, this is pretty horrible yeah bit of a disaster yeah i mean the there's one uh developer that said that they would like go into an empty room and, and just cry, cry. uh crazy. just oh the, my god just did from from the stress of everything and, and this this article uh it it verified a lot of things that i was wondering throughout this whole process from the announcement yeah. of the game and everything just like i always felt weird i was like i don't know if i want to play this or not Mm-hmm. And it was always kind of like, I'm going to wait and see, right? Because this is, again, this is a game that, like, you know, me and my best friends have to all get so we can play yeah, together. Yeah. I'm not going to play by myself. And yeah, we were all kind of yeah. like, are we going to get this? We don't know. Like, what is it? Like, what is this game? And mm-hmm. I was like, it, do, I feel I felt weird for feeling that way. Mm. I was like, what what exactly is this game? And it, it like, validates that, like, the developers are like, what know. are we yeah. making, you know? <laughs> I mean, to me, the game looked cool. And when yeah. I played the, the demo and everything, it played very well. It just seemed like uh, it didn't have much of a – much to it where it would bring you back to keep playing over and over. Yeah. And I think that was what they were trying to go for, but – didn't succeed in that regard i mean the the controls are super smooth graphics are great uh design of everything looks great i think it's just more of a a a choice of what they wanted the game to be and it seemed like it didn't land any specific place right Um, it's there's mention here of decade-long veterans leaving bioware mm -hmm. in the past two years because of the development of this game. I, I cannot even imagine how much of a disaster it must have been to put this game together and reach that release date. And this is just another one of those prime examples with any game that ever gets made, please, for the developer's sake, for the publisher's sake, for the consumer's sake, do not force that a developer has to reach a release date. Yeah. They have to reach some specific date for the game to be done. Just let them work. Just let them make the game. This can apply in any industry, whether it's films, mm. television, video games. Just let people work. It is not worth them going through that stress and that mental damage for a cool game to come out a little bit sooner. You know, we can yeah. all wait. We can all survive waiting a couple of extra months if it means we get a better game out of it, one. Yeah, that's the And thing. if it means the people working on the game can maintain their sanity, too. Yeah, that's the thing is I don't think the video game industry has a grasp on that. Movies, yes, you'll see movies yeah. delayed and there'll be production issues, but in general, movies know exactly how long pre-production is, how long production is, how long post-production is, and they usually hit their target dates. Mm -hmm. Usually when something in the pre-production or production stage uh, like happens, then they'll know, okay, we got to move this release date back or or whatnot, where I feel like games, video games, isn't mature enough as an industry yet to get a grasp on that yet. I just will never understand the, the, this thinking of like, Nope, the fiscal year's coming up in March. You have to get it out by March. Okay, great. If you would have waited till August and if you fix this stuff, how many more people are going to buy and play this game? Yeah, Yeah. I don't understand that thinking. Yeah. There, there was a 90-day roadmap released for Anthem off of its launch. I, I'm guaranteeing you that they don't meet some of those things that they had promised within that 90-day roadmap. Oh, yeah. And even if they do, 
who's playing the game right now? You know, you you launched the game in such a rough state yeah. that the player base died off immediately. And even someone like me who enjoyed for a majority of the game, I, I had a good time and I mm-hmm. thought it was pretty decent. I gave it, I believe, a 6.5, somewhere mm-hmm. in that range. Um, so, like, it, it's not a horrible game by any means if you're asking me. But imagine how much better mm-hmm. it could have been. This is why, you know, th- there are certain studios, there are certain developers that are they, they don't get it yet. Mm-hmm. But then you look at something like CD Projekt Red, mm-hmm. who just mm-hmm. makes their game. Yeah. Even if they got to spend more money, even if it's going to take them 10 years, they know when they're done and finished and ready to ship the game is when they will do so. They won't listen yeah. to the corporate machine and be like, oh, we, we got to we gotta reach 2019, we got to reach November, so whatever means possible, that's the date we're getting to, and then you know the game will come out broken and we'll fix it. We'll, we'll make it work after a couple of months. Fallout 76 has failed because of this. Mm. A lot of games, there are so many examples, countless amounts of times where – This is the core issue as to why the game doesn't succeed. Destiny, of course, as well, comes to mind. And I don't know why these publishers, these studios, just they don't haven't figured it out yet that they just need to take more time. Mm, We will wait. We Mm. will wait. We we will will, will wait for games like Red Dead Redemption 2 that was delayed numerous times. But when it came out, masterpiece, incredible, Mm. perfect game. Online's a little bit rocky, needs a little bit more work. But in terms of the single player, they finished and did what they sought out to do with that game. Yeah, I think EA is you know EA is the biggest culprit of this, like of focusing on when it comes to their their games. And we've seen this with the with the the loot box stuff with Mm -hmm. with Battlefront and just the one and uh, two. Yeah, Mm -hmm. the uphill battle they've had to play with that, where it seems like their focus was always driven on the financial side Mm -hmm. versus how fun their games are and, and the success of their games, which is just like so backwards thinking yeah because that, keep... that way the, you if you focus on that aspect then the money comes right yeah. and and they did a, a few weeks ago like released a statement kind of saying like yeah we've uh we pri- we want to pride ourselves on being you know like one of the best companies and we haven't been that way and mm. i think this whole anthem fiasco has kind of sparked that and hopefully yeah. it it, it you know, flips a switch. Yeah, I know, uh, Bio, so Bio responded to, to the Kotaku article and wrote, uh, we choose not to comment or participate in the story because we felt there was an unfair <laughs> focus on specific team members and leaders who did their absolute best to br- to bring this totally new idea to fans. We don't want to be part of something that was attempting to bring them down as individuals. We, we respect them all. We built this game as a team. So, Which is, I think was silly. I mean, it's huh. just a silly it, response. It's just that it, it's a yeah. PR response. Yeah, because I mean, it's like the the article. A people are anonymous mm-hmm. for that reason, which I think was great. It lets people speak their truth mm-hmm. without having yeah. to worry about it, and so we can hear yeah. the real story. And B, like, it wasn't designed to tear this game down. It's designed to say like what could have been and what should be moving forward. If mm-hmm. anything, it should be a pos- It's a positive thing to say like the. Game developers and, and developing games shouldn't trend this way. Mm. Yep. Because we even heard a little bit with Rockstar when it came to to Red Dead Two with the the crunch time yeah. exactly stuff, like people working the overtime stuff, and and that I was mean, a thing. Th- I think this but, is this is across the board in the video game industry. It's exactly. A pretty, yeah. a pretty known problem. It's just I'm but sure the bigger with, ones are even sorry, worse. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was yeah. just gonna say the bigger games with the bigger developers with the bigger mm. budgets and the bigger. But yeah, those I've, I, I'm sure like. Yeah, I had a friend that worked uh, on some of the Call of Duty games, and they would just be working nonstop yeah. one, once yeah. it came to, like, three months out from the right. launch, mm-hmm. launch time. But, mm-hmm. but to my understanding, when it came to the reports that had come out for Red Dead, uh, a lot of developers, a lot of people who worked on the game came forward and said, hey, no, listen, yes, we worked these hours and stuff, but we love what we were doing. Yeah, labor we, love. We, th- Yeah, this was what we wanted to do. As opposed to something like they were forced to do it or, in, or mm-hmm. anything or like they that. they have to because their game's falling apart. <laughs> right. <laughs> like right. Is, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it wasn't like Red Dead Redemption was going to come out as some buggy mess with a ton of server issues or anything. And yet you're, you're absolutely nail on the head there, Tony. This entire article is not supposed to be something to be like, this is why EA sucks. This is why Anthem is terrible. No, it's supposed to be uh, a real look inside behind the curtain as to what happens and what the kind of damage that's done in the creation Mm -hmm. of some of these games Mm -hmm. 
and why it should change going forward. Yeah. Why things need to start being looked at from a different perspective. And it's really unfortunate. I did not know that Bioware had come out with an official statement, but it's really unfortunate that that was their statement. Yeah. I would have much rather they just said nothing and worked internally mm -hmm. to work on these things because that statement to me sounds like they're going to just disregard this entire thing. Yeah, we didn't do anything wanna, wrong. Mm. Yeah, they're going to want to let, let it get swept under the rug and just continue. Because, yeah, Anthem did not make the sales, I'm sure, that EA or even Bioware had wanted it mm. to, but it made good cash. Yeah. Like, it still yeah. sold well. Yeah. So it's unfortunate that because of that, they're probably just going to be like, yeah, we're okay. Let's move on to the next one, you know? And that was the biggest thing in the article that stood out to me was the point when they got to a certain point when they were like nine months out or something mm -hmm. like that and someone, yeah. a new producer came on board or whatever and the goal changed to mm -hmm. let's ship this game. That was the focus. Let's get this done so we can ship it. And that's yeah. never going to be a good sign. No, that shouldn't never. be your goal when you're making a game. Like, all right, let's do this so we can get it out. No, you got to make the best game you can. And the cool thing, you know, games as a service now, um, it looks like now it's in the hands of uh, Bioware in Austin and they're – there's a few good quotes in there from from some of those developers who are pretty confident and happy now that it's shipped and and it's out. They they know what's wrong with it, mm -hmm. and and a lot of the concerns that came up in reviews and stuff like that are concerns that were voiced that were thrown aside by the upper management. Mm -hmm. yep. Now they have their chance to like, well, now we can start to deal with this stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's still hope that this can turn into like Destiny, how they, they kind of rebounded off of the initial launch and, mm -hmm. and yeah. Diablo 3, like they mentioned in, in the game mm -hmm. uh, or in the article, that uh, maybe they can still rebound off of this mm -hmm. as a game, as a service. It's going to have you know legs behind it and hopefully yeah. they can turn it around. Yeah. We'll see. One, one last thing that I do want to say, um, a huge shout-out to, to Jason Schreer mm -hmm. over at Kotaku. This mm -hmm. is some ace journalism here. Yeah. He did an amazing job gathering all this information and getting it out there to the public. So well done to him mm -hmm. for what he's done here. Definitely check out the article if you haven't. Yeah. If yeah. you're interested, it's a, yeah. it's a great read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone's talking about. This yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, this next topic is, this is just more for me. Uh, there, there was a thing on IGN. Uh, they talked, uh, I think there's an interview with some of the, the guys from Remedy, Remedy Games who's, New game control is uh, uh, gonna. That's their next game. Yeah. They just mentioned why Alan Wake didn't happen. They said Alan Wake Two. They were working on this. Is actually one of one of my favorite games. Um, and they had a DLC uh, after the first game, but it wasn't like a full on mm. sequel. It was like a yeah. like a nice like three hour you know DLC. Um, they they said they were working on it, uh, but then it just didn't pan out. I mean, the problem was Alan Wake was only available on the Xbox 360. 360 and PC. Yeah. And it um it did okay sales wise, but it wasn't like a blockbuster right. like uh, Max Payne and whatnot. It and had buzz when it was first yeah. announced. And yeah. then it just kinda Exactly. I, it was a much more story driven game mm -hmm. than I think action. I mean there's definitely a lot of action in it, but it wasn't, you know, a ton of different, you know, like the weapons were were like okay here's standard weapons and and whatnot it was yeah. more more story driven game and mm -hmm. and so they did work on it a little bit but it just they still own the IP so they can still make it if they want to but according to them they're like they're they're locked up I mean they're they're you know they got to get control out and I'm sure they probably have some uh, something else they're already working on yeah uh, for the next one so even if they ever wanted to return to it it'd be quite a ways away so it's still okay. a little so I know. Um, Christian, uh, uh, some people know him as a copster, uh, also is a fan of the game, like me. And it's a, it's like a supernatural action game, very Twin Peak, uh, yeah, yeah, influenced. Yeah. Twin Peaks had a good like, cult following. Like a lot of people really enjoyed that game. Yeah, I remember. I, yeah, I like it a lot. Um, it's looking like controls some kind of spiritual successor in, yeah, in the style of it. It does. It is, but I think they, they mentioned that it's a little closer to Max Payne than oh, Alan wow. Wake. Ah, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But I mean I it's a remedy. I'm gonna ch definitely check it out. And, and from the demo that we talked about, I think last week, it looks and sounds like yeah, it's, people it's, are people yeah. are loving it. Yeah. So 
So just want to throw that Does out that make there. Make you sad though. Yeah. When there's yeah. a there's just a game you yeah. love or a franchise you yeah. love, and there's the it's like movies. It's like almost there. TV yeah. shows, and they take yeah. it away. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, giveth and they taketh. I, I was a big fan of uh, the Terminator, Sarah Connor Chronicles, and oh, it yeah. only had two seasons, <laughs> and it ended on a cliffhanger, and they just never brought it back. You know. I mean? There's there's so many shows yeah. that yeah. got canceled that I I will never forgive. The people, the higher ups, they can't. I mean, Firefly was only one season. They did get yeah. a movie though, so yeah. that that yeah. was cool. Um, all right, next topic before we get into our tour questions, so it's nothing major, but uh, you know, as we come upon Game of Thrones, the final season, season eight, mm. uh, I guess a report, and this isn't like you know confirmed, but just a report says that George R. R. Martin is is making a new game with the developers of Dark Souls, also uh, Sekiro, uh, Shadows Die, Die Twice. Twice. Developers, uh, oh, that, this oh. is a team up. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, doctor. <laughs> so they they mentioned that it would be at least what they're thinking a game similar to those games, but with George R. R. Martin creating the yeah. world, the lore, mm-hmm. the characters. So it's not like he's going in there and being like, "All right, you make sure that this character shoots," you know, yeah, like this. No, no, no. He's, he's just <laughs> creating the lore. He's creating the the world of it and creating the basically the 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 IP of it, and then they will. Fill it out with yeah. with with the actual graphics design, etc. Et so that sounds awesome. like a fantastic marriage. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. what we missed out on Kojima and, and Del Toro. I mean, they're uh, still doing. They're still together, working yeah, together. Still doing right. But mm-hmm. you know, with with the Silent Hills, yeah. mm-hmm. this could be something spectacular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just that there that type of game, mm-hmm. Dark Souls, Sekiro, getting to do that in a more Fantasy, Game of Thrones style, mm-hmm. and yeah. I know they talked about something about like how there's different kingdoms where you mm-hmm. or the idea where maybe you'll be able to do different kingdoms and different orders and stuff. Like, it sounds so awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's definitely gonna have to not be uh, too similar to Game of Thrones. They'll really have to navigate that. Have yeah. to stay away from being too similar to Game of Thrones. Yeah. Stay away from being too similar to Dark Souls. Yeah, yes. Like, really have to navigate that yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. But. Hey, somewhere in the if middle. He, yeah, if he's man, screw it. I mean, if it's super similar to Game of Thrones, yeah, people would love it. You know, <laughs> they would dive right into that too. This is, this Start is using a, Game of Thrones a, terms hell, in there. Yes. What are they just, yeah, yes. exactly. Just make this it a Game a of Thrones of licensed up. game. Yeah. Oh, this that, is that super is. exciting to hear. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope this ends up being true. Yeah, yeah. it sounds yeah, great. Yeah. All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to Twitter questions uh, at. Mario Pro Five asks, "Do you do you believe uh, GTA Grand Theft Auto works better as a movie series or as a ten episode Netflix series? If so, what game do you huh. start with?" Um, I'm, I'm not as I mean I've played Grand Theft Auto, but I, I haven't played all of them. Oh, so, so I would just say, I, it tend to me it seems more like a, a, a TV series than a movie. Yeah. Definitely, definitely more of a TV, yeah, uh, like a Netflix style mm-hmm. and part thing. Um, in terms of where you start, San Andreas would be really cool. Mm-hmm. I think that that is a that is a really nice setting, and that could definitely work for TV. Um, something like Grand Theft Auto Five. I don't. I think it's just a little like Grand Theft Auto Five story is fun and it's great, but I think it's a little too silly mm-hmm. yeah. um, to work in in terms of like actual like a film or a TV show. Mm-hmm. So um, pro- probably San Andreas would be w- would really work. Actually, yeah. the more that I think about it, that, w- that would really really work as a, as a show. And and screw it, get Samuel Jackson back as the cop <laughs> that he voices in that game. That would be awesome. Yeah, it, the stories in all of the games seem a little disjointed to just be a film. Mm. I don't know how, because yeah. yeah, with yeah. all the different missions and stuff you can do, but with mm-hmm. a TV series, like being able to explore that a little bit over a few episodes, um, yeah. San Andreas would be incredible, but I mean, Vice City would be fun. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you get that kind of 80s setting. It's going to be like Office Miami style, Vice, yeah. but like hardcore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like really, you know, crazy. Even even GTA 4, you know, Nico Bellich and all that stuff, like that, that was. That was really interesting. That the whole New York vibe that you got out of it and stuff. Yeah. That there, there's some there's some good stories to pull from within the Grand Theft Auto franchise that I think could definitely work. And even TV. and even if they were spinoffs, but you can just take the characters and the settings. It doesn't yeah. have to be based on the missions yeah, and stuff yeah, in the yeah. games. Yeah, no, no. They they no, set up those no, no, worlds no. so well, yes. you know that um which is which is great. You don't have to because that's a big problem with a lot of video game adaptations like oh they don't stick to the source material well this is a perfect example where you wouldn't have to necessarily stick 
to the source just material. Just keep it inspired by exactly. get the tone, Use get the characters. atmosphere. Let us see San Andreas. Let yeah. us see, you know. Yeah. Um, all right, next question. We have uh, at DM Rankin 12. Oh, shout out. That's my co-host. Oh, cool. Nice. Well, what is your <laughs> biggest... This is for you guys, you two. What is your biggest wish or ask to see in Borderlands 3? Sky's the limit. Get weird if you want. Oh, boy. <laughs> get weird. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Uh, there's a few, like, quality of life things, mm -hmm. uh, one of which we've already seen in the trailer of, like, characters sliding. Mm -hmm. That kind of mm -hmm. just increased movement is always good. Um, one thing, and a shout-out to my buddy uh, Grayson who mentioned this, where once he said it, I was like, yeah, because in my latest playthrough of Borderlands 1 Remastered, one thing I've noticed is how many times I try to jump up on a ledge that I'm pretty sure I would make the jump for, and I just missed it. Mm -hmm. So please, Borderlands 3, just give me a clamber option. If I push up on a ledge, a, a ledge I can just grab on yeah. and vault That's up good. onto it. You know, like it, that just that, that those tiny little quality of life things that improve the game overall when you see the grand scheme of things is what I want. But outside of that, just give me more Borderlands goodness. You know, yeah. all the crazy, ridiculous things that we've seen in Borderlands. They've already adopted that style. We saw a gun with legs yeah. for yes. Christ's sake <laughs> in the trailer. Yeah. Yes. So just give me more of that and I will be a happy camper. Yeah. I, my biggest ask is just let it work. <laughs> I got the yeah. Borderlands <laughs> remastered game of the year edition that just came out on next gen. I we tried me and him who just asked the question. We tried all night last yeah. night oh, and we couldn't party up on PS4. Um, yeah. So that'd be great. But talking about the crossplay, <laughs> if they can if they can crossplay not just PC and uh, Xbox, uh, yeah. if they can throw in that just all I mean, platforms, you can play, man. that would be awesome as well. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to yeah, just. It, I just hope it's just as crazy as the series has been, mm -hmm. and and they just keep that heart and that yep. character that it has. Mm -hmm. But um, before it's reveal, the one thing that I would have asked for that they've already done, which I'm so happy about because Gearbox just gets it, is to have included the characters from Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah. And in that reveal trailer, I've already seen. I see Reese. Right. They've explained that Vaughn is in the game. I hope that Loaderbot's in there as well. If you yeah. know Tales from the Borderlands, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and and I guess beyond that, the only thing that I would ask for in like DLC is the ability to potentially play as some of those characters. You know, I would cool. love to play as Reese and have him have this really cool move set or something because he's owning the Atlas Corp Corporation now in the Borderlands 3 storyline, or even just let me play as Loaderbot, although he looks very similar to one of the characters that's already playable in the game. I think that would be awesome. Just give me more Tales from the Borderlands, and that'd be great. Cool. Yeah. All right, uh, one last question before we go. Uh, at CwC asks, would you consider Tracer from Overwatch a modern video game icon? How about an icon in general? Well... As a, someone who doesn't play Overwatch and I am familiar with the character, I don't. Yeah. I personally don't think it's reached a modern video game icon. Just because yeah. I mean, when you're talking about video game icons, you're talking about Mario yeah. and Sonic, right. and then sure you can you can go down. They don't have to be that big, but yeah. still, like you're talking about the uh, even like. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, Master Chief, maybe. Yeah, Master Chief. Like I think, I think Tracer kind of falls under really? the, the Master okay. Chief sort of area, especially for for modern games I, now. You know, that's, I just that's don't a, know if it has crossed over enough to the casual audience, right? Yeah. Where like someone would be like, "Oh, who's that? Oh, they know who that is." Because like, right. I think yeah. people who see Halo who never played a Halo game before in their life still know that. Recognize if you see it on a T-shirt, you're like, "Oh, that's the, the you know the, that's the character something. from yeah, the right. video, that video right. you game." You see Mario, you see Sonic. Maybe ten you see... years time, maybe ten years time, we 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 could feel a different way. Sure. Yeah. Maybe I've... maybe because Overwatch is still. I mean, it's been out for what five years yeah. now, but but present. I mean, it, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um. But I, I think I think she is recognizable enough to mm -hmm. where you can make an argument yeah. that she she's among that list. I think it's tough, especially in that game with there being so many characters. There's a yeah. lot of like popular right. characters in that game where if you because I don't play the game either. Um, so if you handed me a, a poster without their names on it, I don't think I'd be able to pick her out of the group. Okay, you know what I mean. Like, so when it comes to that 
kind of speaking on the the point for the mm-hmm. casual fan. Mm-hmm. If you if you put them, you know, like if you put the the roster of Super Smash Brothers in front of my mom, yeah. she'll be able to pick out a handful of those yeah. people. She'll know Mario. Right. She might know Pikachu, mm-hmm. but. If you put the Overwatch roster in front of you, you'll have no idea. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like, okay, like, uh, I'm looking at a list right now, just jog my memory. Laura Croft. People know who Laura yeah. Croft is, even if they've never played a Tomb Raider game. Donkey Kong. Before, yeah, yeah Donkey Kong. I mean, even so, like some so of the like, characters yeah, from Mortal Kombat, like uh, uh, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Sub-Zero yeah. Scorpion, those are like iconic Ryu. characters. Ryu, people know Ryu. Uh, Solid Snake from uh, yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, those are all characters that that transcend just being video game icons yeah. and are just like icons. Like everyone around the world knows Mario and Luigi. Yeah. There's yeah. not a single person on the planet mm. that just does not know that, you know. But when it comes to being a video game icon, I think Tracer sort of does fall under that list. She's definitely the most popular in the series, right? Right. So, right. In exactly. a very popular series. So that – has a lot so, to say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, maybe let's wait like another five, ten years and see and how see. Yeah. memorable she is. And I this mean, is just my ignorance speaking since I don't play the game. I don't have the connection. <laughs> but, but that's you know? the thing is like if you want to say an icon, right? You're, you're talking about something. Okay, like right now I'm looking at another list. Uh, Vault Boy from Fallout, right? Not everyone plays Fallout, but they've seen that 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 okay, iconography of Vault Boy. Up. Yeah, they've seen that. They're like, okay, what's, what's yeah. that? Like oh, I've mm-hmm. seen that before where – Honestly, I'll tell you right now, you I, I I've, I've seen Tracer before, but like I don't know if I could pick her out right. out of like a bunch of different other Overwatch or similar looking characters. Right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. If you give me a poster of all the characters that you can choose from, I mm. I maybe 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 because yeah. I have played it like a handful of times. Yeah, and just like process of elimination, yeah. figure it out. But yeah. um, but you're also you're talking about Link. Uh, from Zelda, you're talking about yeah. P- Pikachu, yeah. you know. But see, but see, here's the thing about Zelda is I, I, I can guarantee you, when people see Link, they're like, "Oh, that's Zelda." That's yeah, Zelda. of course. Yeah. But, but there's a lot I'm, of people. Of do course, that. of course. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah. is is even that type of familiarity, even if you don't know yeah. exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like with Halo or Master from. Chief, you're like. That's from a video game that, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, if you're, like, an older person, you're like, my son yeah. plays or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, think it's, it's it, an, I think it's an interesting argument to to fight both sides on for, yeah. for this. Hey, I'm rooting but, for uh, I'm rooting yeah, we'll for see. We'll see in due time. Well, I mean, what do you think the yeah. last, like, most recent icon in, in video games has been? Uh, That's a good question. Okay, oh, like, like, like Claptrap is, is at least... I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, he's not on that level, you know, yeah. yet, but he is with, he associated with Borderlands. Yeah. Like people have seen that. familiar, yeah. Uh, latest icon? Ooh, I don't know. Arthur that's Morgan? A, that's a tough one. Arthur Morgan? I mean. I think it's hard to distinguish because you can change what the character looks like. Exactly. I know, that is a big deal because when I was at like the Game Awards yeah. and they like show the, I'm like, that's not my Arthur Morgan. Yeah. Mine had a big old beard. Yeah, mine had like a big beard. So I was not like, yeah. I was not. When he's happy. Talking, when he was talking, I was like, "That that's not Arthur." So. And even just them oh, showing I, the, I gave the clips. my Arthur like a fancy mustache. Uh, yeah, the nice I gave haircut. him a big. Oh, yeah. look, uh, Kratos. Kratos. From God of War. Kratos. That, yeah, Kratos he's been there. around a while. No, but yeah. I mean, he's still modern. I mean, that's a modern, well, modern video, yeah. modern video mm-hmm. game icon. Like I consider him. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I see him. I think that's fair. You it's know. it's hard it's hard to say what would be the most recent, like the newest and, IP that would be yeah. an icon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, tough. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting it's, though. I, I would like to see, you know, in in due time, in a couple of years from now, how big Overwatch still is, because Overwatch is still big. Like, huge. There, there's, yeah. there's, yeah, still I'm not a denying lot of how playing. big it is. I'm just longevity. It's too no, soon. No, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Street Fighter characters, like yeah, Ryu. Ryu. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah mentioned Ryu. Yeah. Uh, 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 Samus from Metro- Samus. Uh, uh, Metroid. Yeah. Pretty much anyone in Smash Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> That's what <laughs> that game much. is. It's it's icon battle. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, so that's it for this episode of the Collider Games podcast. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's been listening or watching online. Uh, I want to thank people who join us today. Tony, where can people find you? You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Tony Revis. And Caboose. 
You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Caboose EK and right here on Collider Games. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram Dennis.TZNG. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Games. And also subscribe to the Collider Factory feed, which is where this weekly podcast is, appears. And we also have a bunch of other podcast feeds for Movie Talk, Jedi Council, Heroes. Uh, we just started a Game of Thrones uh, podcast. I, I, Me... Ashley B. Robinson and Haley Fouch will, will be on the an episode Endates. next week. Yeah, it's, it's coming up Endates. soon. Um, that's going to be on the Collider <laughs> TV Talk feed if you want to check that out. Uh, so we have a lot of good stuff. So until next time, see you guys later.